Today, I'll introduce Jama Sho. Jama Sho was born on September 21st in 1755 in Royal Frankfurt County, near Germantown on the Virginia frontier. He was the f- first of 15 children born to Thomas Marshall and Mary Randolph Keith. His father was a land surveyor for Lord Fairfax and made a tidy income. His cousin was Humphrey Marshall, who would later become a U.S. Senator for Kentucky. John Marshall and his father were descendants of colonist William Randolph, who had helped establish the Commonwealth of Virginia. The second one is about John Marshall's education. As a child, Marshall was mainly homeschooled by his father. He did, however, spend one year at Campbell Academy in Westmoreland County, with future U.S. President James Monroe as his classmate. In 1767, a young Scotch minister came to live with the Marshalls for a year while he was being tried out by the congregation. This provided John with his first bite of formal education. In 1772, he received his second time of formal education at the Academy of Reverend Archibald Campbell. But perhaps more importantly, Blackstone's Commentaries was published in America and Thomas Marshall bought a copy. Not only for him his own use, but more for John to read and study. The Marshalls had long before decided that John was to be a lawyer. The last time of formal education came in 1780, during a six-week stay at William and Mary College, where he attended the law le- lectures of George Wealth. The third one is about. John Marshall's professional career. During Marshall's 34 years as a chief justice, he gave content to the constitutions of omissions, clarified its ambiguities, and added breathtaking swap to the powers it conferred. He set the court on a course for ages to come that would make the U.S. government supreme in the federal system and the court the constitution's expositor. He acted as if he were the enduring farmer whose constituents was the nation. He knew the true meaning of the constitution and he meant it to be provided. He made his position a judicial pit to foster the union of his dreams and to compete, if possible, with the politic- political branches in the shaping public opinion and the national pub- policy. The first one is his president appointment. In 1796, President George Washington offered him the post of Attorney General and U.S. Minister to France, but Marshall and but Marshall declined them both. Marshall began his diplomatic career as one of the f- three involves appointed by President Adams to negotiate with French Foreign Minister Talleyrand. In 1797, the mission failed, resulting in the XYZ affair and the cross war with France. <clears throat> in 1799, Marshall successfully ran for a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives. The next year, he looked Tentatively accept President Adams' request to serve as Secretary of State. Senator confirmed his on May 13. In 18, Marshall's tenure as 
secretary lasted only until early the next year, as Adams declined to run for re-election in 18. Number five talks about John Marshall's landmark. One of Marshall's first landmark case was Marbury versus Madison, which established the basis of judicial review. The case went to Supreme Court in 1803. In another case, the Cohen brothers sold Washington D.C. lottery tickets in Virginia, which was a violation of Virginia state law. They argued that it was legal. The decision is where Marshall and the Supreme Court had to weigh about which court has the final say is deposed between state and the national government. The sixth one is about John Marshall's interesting facts. Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, John Marshall, who had almost no formal schooling and studied law for only six weeks, Nevertheless, remains the only judge in American history whose distinction as a statesman derived almost entirely from his judicial career. The seventh one is about his death. John Marshall proudly served on the Supreme Court until his death on July 6, 1835 at age 79. In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the liberty bell was rung during his final procession. Legend says that this was when the bell cracked, never to be rung again. Although the newspapers never reported that the event and it has never been verified the Supreme Court of New York Times versus United States. Daniel Ellsberg believes that America needed to know what was in this report and decided to make the Pentagon paper public. Ellsberg copied more than 7,000 pages of document that revealed the history of government's actions in the Vietnam War. In 1971, the decision by New York Times and the Washington Post to print illegal leaked Clarified documents about American involvement in the Vietnam War sparked the, a First Amendment battle between the highest level of government and two of the most respected newspapers in the country. New York Times versus United States remains one of the most important freedom of the press case in American history. This case happened in Washington, D.C. Specifications of this case is in 1971, the New York Times published the first chapter of the Pentagon Papers. The administration of President Richard Nixon then issued federal junctions against publishing the remainder of Pentagon Papers to both the New York Times and the Washington Post. The federal government argued that the publication of the top secret history would imperil national security. President Nixon's administration did violate the First Amendment. In a 6-3 decision, the court ruled that U.S. government had not met the heavy burden of showing justifications for the enforcement of prior restraint. Because of President Nixon's violation, this case became Supreme Court of News Media versus United States. The court ordered the immediate end of the injunctions against the publication. The court offered two explanations for its ruling. First, both the history and language of the First Amendment support the view that the press must be left free to publish news, whatever the source, without censorship, injunctions, or prior restraints. Second, that the publication of a history of U.S. action in Vietnam would not endanger current military personnel by revealing their locations or movements. The case reached the Supreme Court in June 1971.